us they were throwing airplanes and bombs at us. I didn't even know the word kamikaze. <laughs> divine when I didn't see anything divine about it. If there was ever anything that was going to crack a person's psyche and crack his ability to carry on, it was a kamikaze. I couldn't understand why they were doing this. And to this day, I have a hard uh, time understanding how a person could do that. At the southernmost tip of Japan, on the site of a World War II air base, a memorial service is held. It honors a unit unique in warfare, the Kamikaze Corps. But this is not just a service for the dead. These men were themselves Kamikaze pilots. Shot down en route to their targets, Still waiting to be called when the war ended, these are the kamikaze who survived. Most kamikaze pilots died young. Many never reached the age of 20. Those they left behind have grown old, remembering them. compelled to fight. These men volunteered to die. What impulse prompted Japan to make a strategy of suicide? It was not a whim, it was a crisis. June 19, 1944, the decisive dogfight of the Pacific War. In a single day, the Americans claimed 315 kills. And for the Japanese, there was worse to come. Their fleet was now unprotected from the air. The next day, the Americans struck. Their chief target was the Japanese carrier force. They sunk two carriers and badly damaged another. Japan was facing something unique in her history. Defeat. Unless a savior appeared. And six weeks later he seemed to, when Naval Warrant Officer Shoichi Ota presented himself at the Naval Aeronautical Research Laboratory to design technician Tadano Miki. It was a rough plan for a missile later called the Oaka or Cherry Blossom. Slung beneath a bomber, it would be flown to the target and then released. Rockets could propel the Oka at nearly 400 miles an hour, and a 1,200-kilogram warhead could sink even the largest Allied ship. Previous plans had been rejected, since they had no guidance system to steer the missile to its target. Ota had a simple solution. A human pilot would be on board. <laughs> あの、
おろそかにすべきじゃないと、いくら戦争といえどもと、こういうことでやったわけですよね。で、あの太田将棋はそ、そしたらこういうのは誰が乗っていくって言ったら、私どもが乗ってきます、私が乗ってきますと、こう言ったら、私,が私たちが乗っていくんだと、こういう。オーティス・パッション・プロー e ディサイシブ、The Missile was commissioned. But was オーティス・パッション・プロー・ディサイシブ、The The answer to that was to come from an unexpected quarter. On August the 20th, 1944, an American bombing raid approached southern Japan. The Ozuki unit was scrambled to intercept. Until now, they had achieved little success against the B 29s. But that day, squadron leader Masaji Kobayashi saw his men adopt a different tactic. So they えー、覚悟を決めて、延べただいまから体当たりというふうな無線を打ちましてね、でそのまま、その防衛の編隊長、えー、6機、9機の長期の、長期にぶつかったわけですね。The B 29s were destroyed. The dead Japanese pilots were promoted. Spiritual conviction, the papers told the people, had shown the way to vanquish material strength. But plane for plane, the Japanese were hopelessly outnumbered. To win the war by these suicide methods, they would have to hit a different target. Above all, the Pacific War was a carrier war, and the Allies were winning it. When they launched airstrikes against the Philippines on October the 17th, they confronted Japan with a simple choice sink the carriers or admit defeat. With the Urka missile delayed in production, Japan turned to the elite 201st Air Group, based in the Philippines and famed for its samurai spirit. Its pilots were to take a plane. Strap a bomb beneath it and fly into an Allied carrier on a volunteer basis. The task of raising the volunteers fell on the wing commander of the 201st, now its sole survivor, Tadashi Nakajima. So the Kibosha, the Kami Kaite, Motikoi. Darim Kaite Konokatra, the Bushu Koto, the Koroba, Sinin no Kashkanga, so no. 布団に入れて書いたのを持ってきました。調べてみたらば、三つだけ白髪が入っとって、あとは全部、うん、希望ということなんです。The three who had not volunteered were in the sick bay. Many of the others, hoping to increase the chance of selection, had signed their paper in their own blood. So on the morning of October the 25th, 1944, the first kamikaze sorties were flown from Japanese bases in the Philippines. Target carrier task units one and three, 440 miles to the southeast. I had finished breakfast and was back just outside the photo lab. At about that time, the general alarm went bong bong and then a machine gun and boom. That was it. And just in a fraction of a second, the ship was in a roar inferno, 
smoke you couldn't see, and all sorts of confusion. I watched this plane come in, and it just kept on coming in. It was like slow motion almost because he was firing his guns. I saw the, almost saw the projectiles hitting the deck. My body from my belt up was exposed above the flight deck, and the plane kept on coming in, and it didn't pull out. And I yelled, pull out, you bastard, pull out. I screamed it. The damage almost sank the U.S. carrier Santee. But it did not become clear that this was a deliberate tactic until the following day, when Robert Fentress took the first ever film of a kamikaze attack. I was on the flight deck with a camera. And, uh, I saw this one coming, and uh, when you're standing there all shook up and jerky, well, it, was a, it was a feat, really, to, to follow the plane in. But we did. And when it hit that deck, I was just absolutely dumbfounded. I could not believe that someone would do something like that. I couldn't believe what I had seen. And I said to one of my shipmates who was standing very close to me, did you see what that joker did, or words to that effect? And he said, what do you think they did to us? That's the first time I knew it was a kamikaze. We are real cocky bunts. Uh, we thought we had the war won. And then when they began the kamikaze attacks, it just, it scared the living daylights out of everybody. Suddenly, we were not the great Navy that we thought we were. was a picture taken of our chaplain and a couple of fellows uh, stand, not a couple quite a few fellows standing around and um, I had the picture and I never realized I was in the picture and there was this young sailor looking very very scared still uh, looking on as we buried the guys uh, they were good guys and to look at um, the other fellows that were standing there, how frightened they looked. Well, we were frightened. We were scared stiff. Kamikaze pilots had a very different attitude to death. It was almost as if they...
two, and then there were three, and they just keep coming. And eventually, of course, we knew they would get us, but we hoped, and I, I think our gunners hoped, that they'd shoot down enough of them that they might pick another target. The way we stopped them was just to fill the air with flak, and if there was ever an opening in the flak, they were on you. And uh, we had a number of them just barely miss us at Okinawa. The attacks could continue for up to 24 hours at a time. The Japanese had enough planes, but they were running out of pilots to fly them. By May, nearly all the original volunteers were dead. New recruits were needed, and a new operations officer to maintain the samurai spirit. One new arrival was Ryokichi Kataoka. Towards the end of the war, some new kamikaze units were formed of students with only 30 hours of training. Even new recruits followed the samurai code of willing self-sacrifice. Stories of pilots drugged or strapped into their planes are false. They volunteered, or in some cases they didn't. そして、みんな僕語に逃げたわけ。飛んで急いで。え、突然来ましたから。そしてね。で、その後すぐすぐあの終戦になりましたんでですね。後のままみんな生きてるわけです。で、転勤を頼みに行って転勤の命令が出た隊長だけが戦死しました。どうもなんとなくですね、不思議だなという気がするんです。A selection of those who had volunteered was made each day. The man who picked the names was Fujio Hayashi. 何度か自分の名前をトップに書いて出したこともありました。その都度却下されたわけです。何ぼやっても飛行機のある列船に向かう。そこまでほとんどそこまでしか私は見送ってないわけです。あまりに辛いから人のいない方に走って車に込んで泣いていたと。ただあのそれがトラックに乗って列船に向かう時の。トラックの上から流れてくるわけですけども。ちょっと待ってください。緑小島のふるさとよさらば。
白いハンカチ振るてよさらばキリリヒコボに菜の花さしてああ空は男の行くところこ,この歌が一番数多く歌われました Ryokichi Kataoka sang that song not once but four times. Three sorties were frustrated by mechanical failures. So, the Gojuni Tanoga, Nani Hedi, Nani Hedi, Nani Hedi, Simon Niko Ninka no Konagana. The Mogomo Simon, Simon in the Teta Tokini, Moch Kore de Mochi, Mata Guanga of the Kareva, Jibunda Geda. Totemotorea Mo Kairu Koto Sonoto, a Keste. その批判されることでも何でもないんですけども自分自身の気持ちがもう嫌だとですから行けるとこまで行って But Kataoka was shot down en route to his target He eventually returned to Japan to find that the authorities had issued his death certificate He remained officially dead for five years 絶対死の放火台にであっても、なんかこうぶつかっても死んでも命があるようなっていう状態を言ってるのが本当の気がします。なぜならば、今まで死んで帰ってきた人はいないから、死というのはどういうものかわからないから、その死,死でも、えー、自分が生きるんじゃないかと、そう思いつつ死んでいくんでしょうね。Hachiro Hosokawa was never permitted to sortie. He was too highly valued as a training officer. But his colleagues continued to depart. There was only one way to stop a kamikaze, total disintegration. And its speed was such that there was only 20 seconds to destroy it once it came within range. Cases of combat fatigue among Allied gunners more than doubled. We had one gunner whose uh, 40 millimeters uh, guns uh, had been hit. And he just simply got up on the gun tub and jumped over the side. And someone heard him say, it's hot today. And he jumped right into the water, and we never saw him or heard from him again. And uh, how badly injured he was, I don't know, but he could still talk. And that's, that's what he said. So um, the, um, and that's all he said. It's hot today. And um, I had never imagined that warfare could be like this. Seeing that plane so large and so vividly as it dove in, I wouldn't want a picture of it, but I do have a picture of it in my mind. That microsecond before the propeller hit the deck, I just couldn't believe it. It was, it was something that was unreal. Something you never heard of somebody doing. And, um, ah. It's, uh, it's over now. At one point in May, under kamikaze attack, the Allied commanders considered withdrawal from Okinawa. It was the Americans who suffered above all. Unlike the steel decks of the four British carriers in the Pacific, the wooden decks of the American carriers made them especially vulnerable. Kamikaze planes penetrated to the hangar deck beneath, igniting hundreds of thousands of gallons of gasoline.
ところが命がな特効体というのは平時亡くならん時にずっと住んでおらなければならないんですねやっぱり全く神様みたいな気持ちじゃないので夜になったら心配事が起こったりですね涙が流れたりするんですよそれは怖いから流れるんじゃなくてですねちょっと言いにくいけどもなんとなく涙が出てくるというような感じですね Discipline did waver in the face of death. Insubordination and sloppiness became commonplace. The officers were ordered to enforce the rules. On June 23, 1945, Okinawa fell. For the first time in 12 weeks, the Allies could assess their damage. One day we had a, um, a malfunction in a remote fuel oil level indicator. And uh, this fuel oil level indicator mechanism that gave us the reading in the engine room was located number four hold on the starboard side. And I knew where all these were. That was part of my responsibility. So I went down into the cargo hold and I head over toward the corner. And I couldn't see it at first because there's a lot of wood and paper debris laying around there. So I was digging through that to get to this vertical pipe. And uh, I came across uh, what turned out to be this kamikaze pilot's leg, his right leg. And it had been blown off about halfway down from the knee and about halfway up from the knee. And of course, it was all black from, uh, from he, of course, he burned. and. And it was about a month and a half later, so everything was pretty rotten. And guys were souvenir happy by that time. Anything you could find that was Japanese, they made souvenirs out of it. They had a big box up in the rope locker at the fore peak of the ship. And then when anybody found anything that was Japanese, they'd bring it up there, and then the guys would make souvenirs. So I took this, and of course it still had the meat on it. It was all black from being burned, you know. And as I tell it now, it sounds kind of gruesome, and really, it's bad. You know, it sounds bad. but. I was a young, hard, you know, hardened by the war, and it didn't bother me at all to do that. Pick it up, take it up there, and say, "Here's, make some souvenirs out of it." The guys actually sliced the bones, cross sections. They made necklaces and rings and ear rings out of the bones of that pilot. That sounds pretty bad, but it's, but you know, I thought about that in recent years. I wondered if the, if, if the parents of that boy, a young young man, a young airman. Knew that we took the leg of his son and, and did that, that would be terrible. You know. And of course, they would. His parents were probably dead a long time ago, you know. What I mean? But anyway, that, that, that thought occurred to me, and I thought that was kind of bad. But at the same time, it doesn't detract from the fact that he was trying to kill us and we were trying to kill him. That's role in this game. So I didn't feel, I didn't feel guilty. There was no guilt about it. It's just uh, a feeling of sadness that, uh, that men will do things like that, you know. よくあの日本では、えー、死ぬ時にですね天皇陛下万歳というよりは本当はお母さんと言って叫んで死ぬんだという話がありますけれども私の母は小さい時に死んだのでどうも母の印象が薄いわけですねで父親に育てられたんでところがあのお父様って言って死ぬのもちょっと様にならないなとただ非常に愛した芸者がいましたということで美佐子というその芸者の名前を叫んで最後は敵艦に突っ込もうかななどということを考えましたね。Fujiyo Hayashi never flew as a kamikaze pilot. His orders were to continue selecting names. それがちょっと長く生きとるからあれは
あ早く亡くなったからって言うてもですねなん世界のこの生き物から言うたら何のことないんですねそういうふうに考えれば何のことないんですけども。Okinawa, April the 1st to June 23rd. Kamikaze sorties, 1,915. Allied ships sunk, 36. Allied ships damaged, 368. Allied wounded, 4,800. Allied dead, 5,000. Within the precincts of Yasukuni Shrine, there is now a museum for the war dead. An entire room, the last room in the museum, is devoted to the kamikaze. The last photo in the last cabinet tells the story of Lieutenant Hajimi Fuji. Because he was married with three young daughters, his request to fly as a kamikaze pilot was repeatedly refused. His wife drowned herself and their daughters so that he could fulfill his wish. He did so on May the 28th, 1945. On March the 21st, 1995, a special reunion took place at Yasukuni to mark the 50th anniversary of the first disastrous Oka missile raid. Ah, so this is a good thing. 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 まあ、今考えてみればね私なんか本当にどうして生きてきちゃったのかなと思うんですよねただある人に言わせるとお前が生きていなかったら現在の,あの出生体の個体はどうなったか誰も残せなかったじゃないかとそういう意味でお前は運命づけられたんだよなんていうのもいますけどもね、まあ、そうとも思いたくないしなんか複雑な気持ちですよね彼らのことを思い出しているときはね、彼らは私の胸の中で生きてるんですよね。だから、彼らを少しでも長く胸の中で生き延びさせるためにも、俺は長生きしないかん。遺族の人たちと手を取り合って泣くんですよねそれが今の私の戦友に対する思いです I do find myself puzzling over it. I, for if, if, if it was something to be gained, 
by committing suicide, and I don't know how anyone can think that they're going to gain anything if they're dead. But if there's something to be gained by committing suicide, maybe some way I could, in my mind, justify it. But <laughs> it's, it's difficult to, to see how you can gain something if you're dead. In one part of the ceremony, respects are paid before the Oka, the missile which began the kamikaze project. But what of its originator, Warrant Officer Shoichi Ota? He was never officially selected for a kamikaze mission. But three days after the end of the war, colleagues said that they saw him take a plane and fly out into the Pacific. それから私の向こうが6月だったのが大田省へ一番あったと。そして雨の時に傘を貸してくれと言って文字だけで残りは戻ってこなかったということは分かったらしいんですけど。ですから生きていたことは事実らしい。だけどその後どうなったかということはその
It was a rough plan for a missile later called the Oerker, or Cherry Blossom. Slung beneath a bomber, it would be flown to the target and then released. Rockets could propel the Oerker at nearly 400 miles an hour, and a 1,200-kilogram warhead could sink even the largest Allied ship. Previous plans had been rejected, since they had no guidance system to steer the missile to its target. Ota had a simple solution. A human pilot would be on board. Oota's passion proved decisive. The missile was commissioned. But was Oota alone in his desire to embrace certain death? The answer to that was to come from an unexpected quarter. On August the 20th, 1944, an American bombing raid approached southern Japan, in Nakajima. The three who had not volunteered were in the sick bay. Many of the others, hoping to increase the chance of selection, had signed their paper in their own blood. So on the morning of October the 25th, 1944, the first kamikaze sorties were flown from Japanese bases in the Philippines. Their target Carrier task units one and three, 440 miles to the southeast. I had finished breakfast and was back just outside the photo lab. At about that time, the general alarm went bong, bong, and then a machine gun, and boom. That was it. And just in a fraction of a second, the ship was in a raw inferno, smoke you couldn't see, and all sorts of confusion. I watched this plane come in, and it just kept on coming in. It, it was like slow motion almost because he was firing his guns. I saw the, almost saw the projectiles hitting the deck. My body from my belt up was exposed above the flight deck, and the plane kept on coming in, and it didn't pull out. And I yelled, pull out, you bastard, pull out. I screamed it. The damage almost sank the U.S. carrier Santee, but it did not become clear that this was a deliberate tactic until the following day, when Robert Fentress took the first ever film of a kamikaze attack. I was on the flight deck with a camera. And, uh, I saw the...
two, and then there were three, and they just keep coming. And eventually, of course, we knew they would get us, but we hoped, and I, I think our gunners hoped, that they'd shoot down enough of them that they might pick another target. The way we stopped them was just to fill the air with flak, and if there was ever an opening in the flak, they were on you. And uh, we had a number of them just barely miss us at Okinawa. The attacks could continue for up to 24 hours at a time. The Japanese had enough planes, but they were running out of pilots to fly them. By May, nearly all the original volunteers were dead. New recruits were needed, and a new operations officer to maintain the samurai spirit. Destroyed once he came within range. Cases of combat fatigue among Allied gunners more than doubled. We had one gunner whose uh, 40 millimeters uh, guns uh, had been hit, and he just simply got up on the gun tub and jumped over the side, and someone heard him say, it's hot today, and he jumped right into the water, and we never saw him or heard from him again. And uh, how badly injured he was, I don't know, but he could still talk, and that's, that's what he said. So um, the, um, and that's all he said, it's hot today. And um, I had never imagined that warfare could be like this. Seeing that plane so large and so vividly as it dove in, I wouldn't want a picture of it, but I do have a picture of it in my mind. That microsecond before the propeller hit the deck, I just couldn't believe it. It was something that was unreal. Something you never heard of somebody doing. And, um, ah, it's, uh, it's over now. At one point in May, under kamikaze attack, the Allied commanders considered withdrawal from Okinawa. It was the Americans who suffered above all. Unlike the steel decks of the four British carriers in the Pacific, the wooden decks of the American carriers made them especially vulnerable. Kamikaze planes penetrated to the hangar deck beneath, igniting hundreds of thousands of gallons of gasoline. ところ Discipline did waver in the face of death. Insubordination and sloppiness became commonplace.
June 19th, 1944, the decisive dogfight of the Pacific War. In a single day, the Americans claimed 315 kills. And for the Japanese, there was worse to come. Their fleet was now unprotected from the air. The next day, the Americans struck. Their chief target was the Japanese carrier force. They sunk two carriers and badly damaged another. Japan was facing something unique in her history. Defeat, unless a savior appeared. And six weeks later, he seemed to, when Naval Warrant Officer Shoichi Ota presented himself at the Naval Aeronautical Research Laboratory to design technician Tadano Miki. Uh, it was a rough plan for a missile later called the Oaka or Cherry Blossom. Slung beneath a bomber, it would be flown to the target and then released. Rockets could propel the Oaka at nearly 400 miles an hour, and a 1,200-kilogram warhead could sink even the largest Allied ship. Previous plans had been rejected, since they had no guidance system to steer the missile to its target. Ota had a simple solution. A human pilot would be on board. Ota's passion proved decisive. The missile was commissioned. But was Ota alone in his desire to embrace certain death? The answer to that was to come from an unexpected quarter. On August the 20th, 1944, an American bombing raid approached southern Japan. The Ozuki unit was scrambled to intercept. compelled to fight. These men volunteered to die. What impulse prompted Japan to make a strategy of suicide? It was not a whim, it was a crisis. June 19th, 1944, the decisive dogfight of the Pacific War. In a single day, the Americans claimed 315 kills. And for the Japanese, there was worse to come. Their fleet was now unprotected from the air. The next day, the Americans struck. Their chief target was the Japanese carrier force. They sunk two carriers and badly damaged another. Japan was facing something unique in her history. Defeat, unless a savior appeared. And six weeks later, he seemed to, 
when Naval Warrant Officer Shoichi Ota presented himself at the Naval Aeronautical Research Laboratory to design technician Tadano Miki. It was a rough plan for a missile later called the Oaka, or Cherry Blossom. Slung beneath a bomber, it would be flown to the target and then released. Rockets could propel the Oaka at nearly 400 miles an hour, and a 1,200-kilogram warhead could sink even the largest Allied ship. Previous plans had been rejected, since they had no guidance system to steer the missile to its target. Ota had a simple solution. A human pilot would be on board.
two, and then there were three, and they just keep coming. And eventually, of course, we knew they would get us, but we hoped, and I, I think our gunners hoped, that they'd shoot down enough of them that they might pick another target. The way we stopped them was just to fill the air with flak, and if there was ever an opening in the flak, they were on you. And uh, we had a number of them just barely miss us at Okinawa. The attacks could continue for up to 24 hours at a time. The Japanese had enough planes, but they were running out of pilots to fly them. By May, nearly all the original volunteers were dead. New recruits were needed, and a new operations officer to maintain the samurai spirit. One new arrival was Ryokichi Kataoka. まあ、そうするのが目的なんですけども、まあ、あの特攻という戦術から言えば非常にその邪道ですよね。Towards the end of the war, some new kamikaze units were formed of students, with only 30 hours of training. Even new recruits followed the samurai code of willing self-sacrifice. Stories of pilots drugged or strapped into their planes are false. They volunteered, or in some cases they didn't. ほとんど、そこまでしか私は見送ってないわけです。あまりに辛いから人のいない方に走って坂に込んで泣いていたと。ただあのそれがトラックに乗って列車に向かう時のトラックの上から流れてくるわけですけどもちょっと待ってください緑小島のふるさとよさらば白いハンカチ降るて Ryokichi Kataoka sang that song not once but four times. Three sorties were frustrated by mechanical failures. So the Gojuni Tanoga, Nani Hedi, Nani Hedi, Nani Hedi, Simon Nikoninka no Konagana. The Mohomo Simon, Simon in Detta Tokini, more much Kurde Mochi, Mata Guanga de Kareva, Jibunda Geda, Totumotura Mo Kairu Koto Sonotoa, Keste, Sono, Hihan Sarel Koto de Monanda Monai in the Skedomo, Jibun Dishin no Kimuchinga, Mo Yadato. But Kataoka was shot down en route to his target. 
He eventually returned to Japan to find that the authorities had issued his death certificate. He remained officially dead for five years. Hachiro Hosokawa was never permitted to sortie. He was too highly valued as a training officer. But his colleagues continued to depart. 